gives us recoverability from a failure on the disc. And also, RAID normally gives us multiple spindles for performance. So from Exchange 2003 to 2007, we had a 70% IOP reduction, which enabled us in 2007 to start using sort of SATA drives, things like that for Exchange um, when they were used in a RAID combination. Well, from 2007 to 2010, it's another 70% IOP reduction. So now when we look at the requirements for Exchange 2010, it's actually very possible from us, we don't need the multiple spindles. We can just have a bunch of discs and we don't need the RAID necessarily from a performance perspective. Now, obviously we still need protection from data corruption or, or data loss. The guidance is, so if we only have one copy of a database, so we have the active and one passive, you still want to be using RAID at disk level. You still need that extra level of protection. If you have at least two copies, so three in total, one active and two duplicates, well, that means we now have three instances of the mailbox database throughout our database availability group. The guidance now is actually possible to drop RAID altogether. Unless you need the spindles for performance, which you probably won't, you can actually do away with RAID. Uh, just use a bunch of disks, uh, JBOD, and as long as you have at least three instances, hey, if one of them gets corrupt, I have two others still. So even after that one dies, I still have two copies. I still have redundancy, even if that next one failed. And I have places I can pull pages from in the event of corruption. So that's really how the shift is happening now. We're actually moving away from needing expensive RAID solutions and everything else to, hey, if we have multiple servers in database availability group, and that's the way we're scaling, we might just have one disk for each database and we have the logs and the database on the same disk, and, but we have multiple copies of it throughout the availability group. Now, one thing you might be wondering is the client. So we have our, our client. Where's he connecting to? If you remember in Exchange 2007, Mappy clients, so I'm running Outlook on my local PC, if I connect on the network, the Mappy client would connect directly to the mailbox server. And then the client access server was used for our um, Active Sync, Outlook Anywhere, etc. What we actually have in 2010 now is we actually have so we call it Mappy on the middle tier. Um, the correct thing is RPC client access. So now what happens is we have the client access server. Everyone communicates via the client access server now. So Mappy, Active Sync, uh, Outlook, OA, Outlook Anywhere, everything is coming by the client access server. And then this guy does the communication to whoever company has the active copy of the database. So this does away with any reconfiguration needed on the client side to say, hey, this mailbox server is now the active. So you need to reshift where you're pointing to. So that, that, that's obviously a big change. But one of the cool things we actually have now is in 2010, we can have the CAS and the hub and the other roles on a mailbox server that's part of this database availability group. So in 2007, if a mailbox server was part of a high availability uh, failover cluster, no other roles could exist on that box. In 2010, that doesn't matter. I can be part of a database availability group and still also have CAS and Hub. Now, that's not saying you should do that. It's going to come down to your sizing, um, loads, etc., etc. But it at least now is an option. And that was really the main focus. So in many ways, it's pretty easy now in 2010. In 2007, there was lots of discussions around we have single copy cluster, we have CCR, we have SCR, we have LCR. In 2010, we have database availability groups. Uh, it's not specially installed. We just we installed Exchange 2010, and then we decided to add it to a database availability group up to 16 servers in each DAG. And then we can run a command and say, hey, this database, um, add a copy of database to, hey, I'm going to add a new server. Um, add a new instance database to on that server. Does a seed and then it starts replicating over. Then this guy goes down, the active manager just finds the one that's most up to date 
um, the best fit and makes it the active. Um, so that's it. That, that's really the, the 2010 uh, high availability story. Um, thank you.